Before we wander on into the episode, I just want to make sure that everyone goes out there and hits up the YouTube, check out the Spotify, check out Apple, wherever you're listening or watching to this ep- uh, podcast, is to go down, like it, subscribe, hit the bell if it's YouTube, make sure you're getting those reminders. We do put these out every week, um, so make sure you do to do all that. It helps us out, and in the long run, we can make better things. So again, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Oh, yeah, that's why I put them on the car. Oh, no, that is not why you put yes. the lights on. That is not yes. why you put the lights yes, on. No, no, yes, no, it is. No, 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 no. Yes, it is. Not why you put those lights on the car. God damn. This is just your justification for nope. doing it. You're nope. like, no, see, look, I meant this is why I do it. It's not because I like to be an asshole to people. We can wander our way over, you know, because this is wandering ways. What's Bigfoot possibility? Clink. Clink. How we oh. doing, my man? What's up? What's the word? Oh my gosh! I is. What's the word you said? Well, the word the of the word? day is bird. Bird, bird. Bird is the word. Bird, yeah. is bird. bird is the word. Bird, 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 bird is the word. No, actually, I think the the word of the day for this episode is rain. Yeah, rain or uh, just generally wet. <laughs> wet, right? No, exactly. That was yesterday for me. I uh, I uh, I went kayaking on the Bighorn River by myself. First time I've I've done that, you know, with the Bighorn. Um, you know, and typically it's the raft with Jared. Yeah. Um, you go a lot faster on a kayak than you do a raft, I learned. Oh, I uh, bet. Didn't catch shit fishing probably because of that reason. <laughs> and that's my that's my argument when it comes to that fly fishing, spin fishing argument is like, I probably would have caught something fly fishing. Oh, maybe. Because your bait with fly, you're feeding the fish, right? You're just letting it sit in the bubbles or in the, the bugs floating down the river. You know, it's one of the bugs and the fish are sitting there. They're not even moving. And they're like, oh, here's a bug. Oh, I'm hooked now. When yeah. you're when you're reeling it in, right? You're reeling in that spoon, so you have to mimic a fish and that extra speed. It's like fish don't swim that fast. We're not going to hit. Yeah, I think I did have one hit though at, at one point. There, there, it did feel like one hit it, but he didn't. He didn't hook on. Um, I was using a bigger lure at that time. Not even like didn't even consider it when I started fishing. And he, uh, yeah, he. I didn't catch him. So, but it it. To start off the day, this is where I was going with getting wet, right? Is I'm getting in my kayak. I have it all loaded. You know, I put all the mounts on it. I have like a little cup holder thing. I have a thing for my rod. I have a thing to clip my like oars to. And (laughs) I'm going and I'm getting in. I have one foot in the kayak. I'm on the boat ramp. I'm kind of like scooting it out there because I'm like, all right, let's get out in the water. But like right where you put in on the river is right next to the after bay where they have the dam that's like feeding the river. And that that's, what's nice about this river is this time of year, you can actually fish it because the Yellowstone and all these other rivers are muddy because they're just pouring water, but the dam helps regulate the river. So it's, that's why they call it one of the best trout fishing rivers in the world, you know? Um, and it's in my backyard. So I get to go there all the time. And uh, I'm there. I have the one foot in the kayak. I'm getting out there. I'm like, all right, now's the time. Put the other foot in the kayak and I put it in. And you know how like, kayaks and canoes rock right yeah well it just didn't rock back it it just kept going and i rolled the canoe right there on the boat ramp cut my leg up my knees all bruised right now (laughs) kayak flipped over my hat fell off got soaked my shirt and shorts and underwear are all soaked i'm sitting there and i I look down in the water because i'm like oh crap like my gear fell you know like i had like my lunch and my uh uh, like pliers and stuff they all fell out but the nice thing about the rail blazer stuff is that didn't fall off like they clip right into the canoes. there you go yeah but the stuff in them is what fell out yeah yeah <laughs> they're throwing it in the canoe is or the kayak is full of water and i i look up i look around you know i look to the left and like in the parking lot i'm like oh good good like the one couple that was there getting their raft ready wasn't watching me they're too, too, too <laughs> 
<laughs> but then I turn, I look up on the up on the dam, and there's these two guys fishing. And sure as shit, you know, I could tell they they had to have watched the whole thing because where they're standing is they're looking straight down the river. Oh yeah, yeah. So they saw it, you know. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I feel dumb, but uh, I got in and it warmed up because it actually warmed up to eighty five degrees. Whoa. Yeah, it got hot, but it was it was supposed to thunderstorm. They actually didn't thunderstorm down on the big form. It actually thunderstormed more up in Billings. And if you're watching the Rougarou. That's where those videos came in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you may not have caught any good, any fish, but did you catch a heck of a good time? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I loved, okay. I love sitting on the water. I love listening to the birds. I love the sound of the water, the beautiful sky, the clouds and the way they move all day long. So that was nice. But I did my section of the river, which was about three miles in like an hour, right? So just quick. The river's flowing right now about 4,000 CFS. And typically when we're fishing it, we're fishing about 3,000 CFS. And the uh, uh, it's a little bit lower. It was, it was a lot higher. Um, but it was fine. Like it was, it was still clear water. It wasn't brown and muddy. A lot of algae though, um, which, I, which sucked because every time you reel in, you had algae on. So you had to clean it off the hook. But... I don't know. It was, it was a good day. And then I got to the boat ramp and my car wasn't there. I waited an hour for them to shuttle my car down to me. Um, and that was nice because I just sat there in my kayak, like on the shore, taking in the sun, getting a nice tan. I watched this bird for like a half hour, give itself a bath. Oh, it, there you go. There's a yeah, bird. it was cool. You know, those little black birds? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like it was just like, oh, like I didn't know you got wet. Like I thought you were just an asshole bird. <laughs> Yeah, they are assholes. <laughs> no, I had them all here, literally outside my window here. I went to go get my mail the other day. They were dive bombing me with shit. Oh yeah, no, for sure they'll uh, they'll uh, they'll dive bomb you or other people um, yeah. or other animals too. You know. Oh, my parents' house. You could see there was lines right, like of of this where it would happen because the cat where the cat would run to. Mm -hmm. So you would see in our driveway like just a line of poop. Of like these birds like where they would chase the cat but no it was cool that was really cool but i had to wait for my car good compliments on the jeep though the guy who drove it because i was there you know he got out and like, gave me my keys he goes i'm not a jeep guy but this goes, I fuck with this <laughs> i was like yeah you know i said i heard you coming down the road because he had my subwoofers turned up <laughs> so that was good but and then, and then I drove home and on my way home, I'm on I-90, you know, or in between Billings and Hardin. And I pull over on the side of the road. Cause I'm like, damn, look at those storm clouds, dark, super dark. And then there's the wall cloud. You can just see the wall cloud. And then it just took a line. And I swear, I, I'm going to go and say this was a tornado or it was that close to being a tornado because it was on the ground. The cloud went and touched the ground. And from when I took that picture to the end of like the, the, the storm was only five minutes long of my day. Maybe 10 because I was going slow. But it was like, I, I took that picture. I got on the interstate. I saw some antelope running across the interstate, all freaked out, right? Like, like yeah. I've never seen an antelope herd run this freaked out unless they're being shot at. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But they're like, oh, fuck, like jumping a fence. Go but like the whole herd was just like confused. Like they weren't running like a typical herd does together. And right about there, the wind kicked in and it was howling. They said at the Hardin airport, they got gusts of up or not gusts, but sustained wind at 88 miles an hour. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And, then, and then probably 30 seconds after the wind kicked in, boom, rain. I could not see two feet in front of the Jeep with all the light bars on, both front and back. I turned the back ones on. I'm like, I'm not getting hit from the end. You know? Yeah, you especially see? probably uh, pretty smart. 
Oh yeah, that's why I put them on the car. Oh no, that is not why you put yes. the lights on. That is not yes. why you put the lights yes, on. No, no, yes, no, it no, is. No, 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 no. Yes, it is. Not why you put those lights on the car. God damn. This is just your justification for nope. doing it. You're nope. like, no, see, look, I meant this is why I do it. It's not because I like to be an asshole to people. No, it's an asshole to truckers. No, you're it's... an asshole to everybody with those lights. The front ones. The back no, ones. yeah, the back ones too. I'm just an asshole. If you, if you got your bright, you do it. Yeah, because you got your brights on. I want to tell you your brights are on. <laughs> I don't like seeing your brights. I do it for storms. No, but that was <laughs> the actual reasoning behind it. Was me and my dad one time we were coming back from Browning, Montana, and we got stuck in a blizzard. Same kind of whiteout conditions where the wind was blowing. You couldn't see in front of you. There were semi trucks in front of us and behind us. And we're like, we're in this little rental car, like four door sedan in this blizzard. And like, we had to actually hit a pull out and just stop for a while and let the storm pass because it was that bad. And I was like, it'd be nice if we had lights for, to see like, or if, cause we almost got hit by a truck once. And it was like on the back, you know, so that you show that you're there. So it actually worked out with that wind. I kid you not, man. I was holding up. Like I pulled over onto the side of the road. I found the grass. I dipped my car against the wind. So like the side that the wind was coming from that was lower than the other side. Just oh. because we wanted to pick you up and roll you. And I was holding my brakes with the car in park. And that oh. fucking thing was just, <sighs> it was what I had my kayak on the roof and I'm like, I'm, I, I'm so surprised that thing didn't blow off. Like it was, I mean, you saw the videos. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I did see the videos. They, um, the clouds before you started getting hit by it were were pretty impressive. Uh, very cool clouds. I know. I wish I had my camera. Oh like, yeah, that would have been good pictures. Because it would have been, it would have been, and then yeah, punched right out of that. You know, all these cars were pulled over, and I'm like, oh, I'm going like 15 miles an hour at one point. You know, once the rain, rain kind of like. Well, it turned from rain to hail. Once the hail hit, I could see a little bit more in front of me because it wasn't as like covering my windshield. Mm -hmm. So I was able to drive and I had all my light bars on and all these cars were just pulled over and I'm just slowly going around each one just because I'm like, I can see, I'm going to get out of this thing to be safe, pull over at this rest stop because I had to, they had to check the kayak for like, you know, the, the, they had to inspect all watercraft. So that was the oh. water. I had to pull over and do that. And I, I got there and those guys, you know, just the eyes on everybody was just like, what the fuck did we go through? <laughs> you know what I, like even the car in front of me who was getting checked, like I was talking to him, he goes, dude, this trailer, I don't like, I was, he's pulling a boat trailer and he goes, I, I, I don't know, man. And I was like, yeah, I said, I could only imagine pulling a trailer. I said, I would be scared shitless if I were you. He goes, well, oh, yeah. Pulling a trailer would be, would be very terrifying. Um, it was bad. Well, then, mean, storms are not fun to drive through. <laughs> no, they're not. But when I got to Billings, too, even I saw two highway patrolmen booking it south on I ninety. You know, they were hit. Someone got wrecked or someone got hurt. It was it was nuts, yeah. man. Because even the people pulling over, right? Like, and that's something to think about, people. When you're in these situations where it is scary, it's a hard to understand. You got to think because there was a guy pulling like a camper trailer from Florida, of course, and the fucking trailer was out in the road still. His truck was pulled over on the side of the road, but it's like, dude, like yeah. engage brain. Like pull, keep creeping up at least. Yeah, yeah. They, you should get all the way over. I mean, you should. I mean, if it's really bad, that's what you do. Just pull over and you're like, fuck it. Wait this it is out. where we are. <laughs> Wait it out. Well, that's the nice thing about driving a Jeep, right? Is I was like, I'm not going to just get over. I'm going to get the other tire, like my far right tires in the grass. Yeah. So I'm all the way over. Cause there's other cars that are coming that are going to try and get over too, you know? So even if they hit you, they're hitting that one side, but you know, I, that's, that's the one time I'm like, thank God I have the, the extra weight. Thank God I have the light bars. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. That extra weight, big time. I could oh, just imagine if you're like a truck with nothing in your uh, tail, in your oh. uh, bed, just there you go. <laughs> well, and especially, and then add a trailer onto that, just that oh, the, yeah. way, the distribution. Oh God. Yeah, no, it, uh, <sighs> physics is wild. <laughs> I'm here though. 
uh, I'll post the videos to Zach of Wandering Ways, which speaking of, man, Zach of Wandering Ways, guys, it's looking good. We got videos every day. The Wandering Ways podcast Instagram's even starting to post photos more and more. Believe it or not, in, in the hiatus, believe it or not, <laughs> we're getting uh, photos out there on that old uh, Instagram <laughs> No, it's been, it's been great. It's been, it's been fun uh, documenting and getting this, this content. (laughs) For sure. Um, No, but the reason why we're talking rain today is at least with your uh, story is thought it was a good idea to maybe after driving through a storm, talk about what to do if it's raining and uh, you're at the national parks or You're just wanting to go outside that day, and the weather seems to not want to play nice with you. Exactly. And where this really does come from is is someone actually, we actually, someone emailed wanderingwayspodcast at gmail.com. Jennifer, she's like, hey, guys, I am going to Glacier National Park next week. It looks like it's going to be rainy. I'm worried because we have reservations for horseback riding for doing outdoor things and we don't want to get wet and we want what are some ideas you have for us in the park so jennifer that's why we decided to dedicate an episode to it because you're right me and mark and matt and bobby and tyler experienced this in glacier too where it was rainy and you really do have to change up your plans um and find something that works you know find the the gear find the other idea whatever it may be um you know, and if you like Jennifer, if you guys have questions, go ahead and shoot us an email at wanderingwayspodcast at gmail.com. W A N D E R I N G W A Y S P O D C A S T at G M A I L dot C O M. Yeah. 100%. And, uh, you know, if the rain is a possibility or you are experiencing rain, uh, I like to always start out regardless is. I just take a little time out and I sing to myself, rain, rain, go away, coming back another day. And uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, that's a, that's the first place I like to start. Right. No, I think that's fair because how many times have you, especially you being in Oregon, right? How many times have you had the rain impact anything in your daily life? Oh, all the time. That's uh, that's an Oregon thing. That's you know they say about Oregon. There's always a twenty percent chance of rain. Um, You're not wrong about that though. Depending on the year, um, yeah, for sure. Except for sure. Yeah, last year, last summer, no, that's that's the anomaly. <laughs> yeah, last year didn't rain. This year been raining a lot. June uh, rain numbers are way up. Um, in fact, it's raining today. Um, oh, wow. So and it was like, oh, and it sucks because it's been super muggy. Um, cause it's been like 80 and then also then the next day it rains. So it's just been this like hot to cold mugginess. That's and honestly what we're having here too. Like I am hot right now. I'm sweaty. It's raining out here today. It was 80 degrees yesterday before that storm. That was the other thing. Why I think it was a tornado, right? <laughs> Sorry. Well, no, it was, it's cause of the, the cold hot, you know? Yep. It was um, five it, degrees. Yeah, I highly recommend everybody go out and watch uh, Seven Worlds, One Planet at the North America episode. They talk about it. They talk about because of the way the Rocky Mountains are, you'll get the cold from the north and then the hot from the south, the Gulf and then Canada. And they come and that's why there's so many tornadoes there. Um, And so I I wouldn't doubt that's, you know, why there was either a tornado for you or a very very high chance of one forming well i looked it up too yesterday because i had to i'm I'm like that right when i experience something i gotta look look up the data uh there was two spots in the u.s yesterday that had uh tornado warnings it was that like little section of montana and then just like a big section of like kansas and none were reported in montana when i looked but that was like at six o'clock, you know, when 4.30 was when I was on the road. You know, it was like six to seven o'clock. I was looking up at this data. So maybe today, if I relooked, it might have different things. But there were two reported in Kansas. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. that's Which makes sense. Yeah. Dorothy, uh, Dorothy, that's why Dorothy ended up in Oz, you know, because Kansas and then tornadoes. 
<laughs> exactly. Well, and the other thing, I took a class in high school. Yeah, I was one of those ones that didn't take the AP classes. So I ended up taking Oceans and Atmospheres. And oh, I loved, I loved this class. It was a great class. And we learned about basically what you're saying on the seven worlds, one planet, the hot and cold and the best place when you're looking, uh, when you're looking at a storm, right? Like a storm cell and you, you're looking at that purple, that pink, that white color on that, on the storm Doppler map. If that's happening on the Southwest corner of the storm, right? That's where your chance of a tornado is, is, is likely to build. Oh, best best chance on a storm yeah that's a little uh that there is a fun fact <laughs> there you go fun fact from zach <laughs> um but no going back to let's say you're planning to go out let's we're going to keep this generally to the parks um because a lot of it can trickle out to just regular nature activities so we're going to talk park park rain um and if the rain decides to rain uh, come down on your day in the any of the national parks. Um, I would always start off with visitor centers. Um, yeah, I kind of think visitor centers are sometimes a little over or underrated. Um, they always have cool uh, things and tons of fun facts. So, I think I, I I like what you say here with visitor centers because you're right. They a lot of them are underrated. Some of them are overrated, though. You do go to, like, more... And, and where this is true, and I think it's probably funding, right, is more of the national monuments. Oh, yeah. When, when you go to the National Park Monument, they're run by the national parks. You go to the, the National Monument, you know, like Devil's Tower, Indiana Sand Dunes, um, where the one me and Matt, Petroglyph National Monument, Albuquerque. When you go to those... They're, they're smaller because they're smaller parks. They're just the monument or they're just the, the one thing. So that's what they're focused on. That's what we're talking about. But then I take like the BLM managed uh, Pompey's Pillar. That visitor center is probably one of the best goddamn visitor centers that the BLM has. And, you know, and, and I could be wrong with some national monuments elsewhere that I haven't been to yet. That do oh, have 100%. You know, a yeah. lot of it is very place to place, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't go check them out because you don't know if it's uh, overrated or underrated until you try it. And I think I would guess it's probably underrated until you it proves you that it's overrated. <laughs> Honestly, and I, I mean, I mean, think of uh, like Old Faithful Visitor Center. I mean, there's like 10 different buildings there with different things you can go learn and go see just in that one village and and just experience i mean we wasted so much time we missed old faithful <laughs> that is true that and old faithful was early uh that time so yeah uh, we that's that's part of the reason why we missed um old faithful that time um but no visitor centers uh there's just a ton uh you know the one in yellowstone that has all the volcanic um thermal stuff that's always a favorite of mine to go to. Um, Which is funny because I've never seen you go into the theater they have there. Because we're always just walking around doing, we're on like a time thing. Yeah, I know. I'm just kidding. I just, I like to, I like to throw shade your way. <laughs> Fair. Uh, if you can't go into a visitor center and the park is big enough and has them, uh, go check out the lodges, different lodges that these parks have. Um you know, some of them are, you know, the the designs in them are pretty cool. Um, you know, what's that? That is it East Glacier, the one that has all the, that one's a, always a cool one to go to. Um, they built it out of the redwood trees? They did. That's the one. <laughs> uh, they uh, they uh, trained them up on over, you know, and that's, an, that's another really cool thing too with, with that park in specific to East Glaciers. You take that that Amtrak train and it drops you off right there in East Glacier in that lodge. I mean, that to me is one of my favorite national park lodges that exists. Um, I haven't really been too many because that they're expensive to stay at. If you want to actually stay the night at them, um, you know, they're like a, a normal hotel room, you know, a little bit bougier hotel room, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I think it's worth it. Cause in some of the places you wake up like in East Glacier, you're waking up in, Look at those mountains in the background. Look at uh, the Grand Canyon. Oh, you're looking over the Grand Canyon. Yeah, right? No, there'd be... Or um, what's the the one... Uh, there's the one in Hawaii Volcanoes. 
Oh, Hawaii house. Volcano house. And, yeah, the volcano house. Because there's the campsites that like we did, but there's also the lodge there where you can stay and you're like looking at the crater. <laughs> I know that was it. I would have liked to stay there. Um, That'd be like, a really cool place to wake up to. Lake McDonald, I think, would be a cool one. Um, yeah, I think Lake McDonald. Any of the Yellowstone lodges, I mean, I would be down for. Maybe the one that I would be like, eh, is Mammoth because how many times I've been to Mammoth Hot Springs. I like, I, you know, I'll go stay with Jared and pray. <laughs> I'll, I'll save the money. Fair. That's, so. <laughs> that's definitely fair. No, the lodges are cool. Um, very cool for sure. But even like if you're not staying at them, I like we, we walk around, they have a gift shop, they have a restaurant. Um, we actually ate at the Old Faithful Lodge uh, the night I proposed to Thea. And you know, We've it wasn't eaten in three lodges that I can think of off the top of my head. What are the three? Let's go. Old go Faithful, name them Old Faithful, East Glacier, and then the Hawaii Volcanoes one. Cool. I think so. Did have we ever eaten at uh, Lake Mc? I think we th thought about eating at Lake McDonald. We went to where the lodge is, um, but they had the other kind of restaurant thing, I think, just up above it. Because there's all the prairie dogs and stuff like right outside. I thought it was like one or two. Um, I believe it was when we were with Matt and Bobby right before we probably. did the avalanche. Lake oh, probably, probably. Yes, yes, yes. I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, because they had that like small restaurant off to the side inside there. Yeah. And the yeah. one we went to, I think it was more, you know, no, it was more of an actual restaurant. I was thinking it was more of a cafe, but the one we went to was like an actual restaurant in that area yeah it was in the oh, area not in the lodge you know, in, in the lodge area. I and mean, that is nice when you do go to those lodges is there is um i did actually when i was in living in cincinnati i went down to mammoth caves they have a nice uh lodge there right up on top near the cave um it wasn't too unique of a building like the old faithful one like that's an iconic building when you see it the yeah. east glacier lodge is an iconic building when you see it um it was just kind of, it was more standard, but I mean, again, I think, you know, when we're 65 years old and Wandering Ways podcast is in its 40th, 50th year, you know, we're going to be doing the Lodge series. We've got to have to. Oh man, that would be a fantastic series. All the Lodges. <laughs> that would be fun though, to be like, yeah, we're, we're doing this trip where we're staying at each park and hitting these Lodges and because well, when we finally make it big, when we finally make it big, there's yeah. two trips I think that we do real big and it's, we do the lodges, like you're saying, but then we do the national parks via the Amtrak, where we oh. just do everything through the Amtrak and we go to as many parks as we can. Um, because we need this podcast to fund it because that's an expensive trip. <laughs> right. No, I totally agree. I totally, Hey, I'm all on board to, to, to be, you know, you, the wanderers firsthand, first eyes, first hands on the scene, letting you know what these lodges are like. Cause we'll get into it. We'll, you know, we'll look under the beds. Yeah, there we go. Oh, for <laughs> sure. Under the beds. You never know what you're going to find. That's where the yeah. boogeyman is. Exactly. Exactly. No, I, I like the parks. I like the lodges. I like the visitor centers. They're all fun. I do too. Big, big plus. Big plus. So I was kind of thinking of getting into sport fishing again, but I feel like I need a good quality net. Well, you know what, Reverend? I got the key solution for you. You know, our friends at Blue Ribbon Net make this eco-friendly aquafade bag so you're not hurting the environment. It's 100% biodegradable. Plus the wood is locally sourced and it is also biodegradable and it's just such a great company to use. Um, the Blue Ribbon Nets, they're here in Bozeman, Montana. And we even have a discount code. That's right, if you use the code RUGARU10, that's right, that's my Jeep, the RUGARU, RUGARU10, R-U-G-A-R-U-1-0. Uh, you're going to get some discount on a blue ribbon net. You know, you can get the long one if you're fishing the big fish, or you can get just the good river one, you know, if you're like me and just want to catch a lot of fish. So again, make sure you go check out Blue Ribbon and use the promo code 
Ruguru 10. Hey, hey there, Reverend. Um, I heard that you might be running dry on your sticker supplier. Yeah, I've been looking around and I've kind of like run out of cool stickers to buy and put on water bottles and stuff. Well, I, I mean, have you seen the stuff Josh has been coming out with lately? No, I have not. Well, he is doing some really cool stuff with the Shop LS574. Yes, they're working with indigenous communities and making some really cool stickers. Um, he has a really cool Buffalo Mountain sticker. There's even water bottles, hats, sweatshirts, the whole swag. And we even got a discount code for you guys. Yes, if you use Wandering Ways at Shop LS574, you're going to be getting a discount on your next purchase. But not only that, you're going to be giving a percentage of that sale to the Little Shell Tribe, as well as they donate a dollar of every sale to murdered and missing Indigenous women. So just such a cool thing going on there. You know, you use the code Wandering Ways, W-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G, W-A-Y-S, and you put that in there, boom, you're getting a discount. Other thing you got to really, um, I think a big thing when it comes to rain is kind of already what Jennifer did, if we're looking at it, and she looked ahead to see what the chance of rain is. Um, so then that way you can plan for rain, change up ideas, or make sure you pack good rain gear. Having good rain gear can make all the difference and can turn a day in the rain and do as joy enjoyable as any other day, um, rain or shine. <laughs> well, no, you're not wrong. And honestly, like I, I totally agree with you because I've been put in a position before with rain with Glacier with Bobby and Matt and Tyler, right? It was raining on us that time. I was in jeans and my jeans got soaked. So on that hike we were doing, like, it wasn't that fun in the wet pants. I was okay with it because I want. I was like, I knew what we were getting into that day. But that's also why I went out later that summer and bought a brand new pair of like, you know, water resistant pants so that when we went to Olympic Park, which is known for the rain, where we didn't get any rain, uh, to wear. 100%. 100%. No, having good rain gear uh, makes all the difference um you know i have i have a rain jacket that i love i have rain pants um that i love and i have hiking boots uh, for those rainier days um that too i love um well it's it's interesting too when you when you talk these clothing options right because i i from montana I recommend jeans. Like I was talking to Jared about this. I said, he's like, I need to get a pair of pants like that. He was looking at the Columbia ones I was wearing. And I said, no, you don't. These work really good in Oregon and Washington, where you get more of like a humidity, uh, they're water resistant, water wicking type material, right? They're, but they breathe because of that, because of the rain, they breathe differently, right? Where the jean is, is meant more to keep it warm and keep it kind of protected, um, so when I wear like jeans in Oregon, they just get wet, you know, mm. where the other pants do a little bit better. You know, when I'm in Montana and I wear my like Columbia pants that are like that, they, uh, they actually like, I feel colder on like a snowy day. If I'm wearing, you know, it's 30 degrees outside. I wear jeans. I'm, I'm a little bit warmer than wearing those like black pants that I have. Yeah. The, I mean, I don't know. You always have to, if you live in a more snowier climate, you know, you're, or colder even too, you know, maybe invest in some winter pants, pants, it's kind of the way to go. Um, but if you live in a rainier climate, the more traditional rain pants, um, or you can try and find a hybrid too. Um, you know, so. you can tell you, you haven't really seen me in Billings in the winter because I, uh, when it gets those negative 20 days and we got, you know, if we got more than four to six inches of snow on the ground, I'm wearing my boots, my snow pants and my snow jacket to work every day. And partly because I can wear sweats underneath my, uh, <laughs> underneath my, uh, snow pants, but I, it's a loud green. It's a loud outfit. You know, yeah. you'll see me walking downtown Billings like, what the fuck, Zach? 
I mean, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, you know, okay. I'll wear I'll wear the full rain giddy up if I have if I think I'm going to be out in the rain. Um, and when I do, I'm very dry. <laughs> so exactly. And I think it was you that was telling me really in reality, you only need to buy one good rain jacket for your entire life. Um, yes. And this is um, it was me who said this because it was the same time um, somebody told me that. And they also said you can wash rain jackets to get that uh, w- rain resistance, um, you know, back up. It so tightens them or something, right? Like it tightens that. It has to do or... with like kind of how their um, the like fibers in the jacket are laid down, and they'll like kind of flatten in a way to where it kind of gets in and trap gets trapped in there and that's when you get the like leaky jacket when you've been wearing it a while but if you like rewash it and put in some like rain jacket liner then it will be almost like new um oh wow yeah it was interestingly enough it was when i went to rei to get my rain jacket the guy (laughs) at rei was like almost convincing me not to buy the jacket and just try and fix the jacket that i had (laughs) and i was like I got the jacket because I what well, I basically told them it was like no like I do really appreciate that and I really thought about it but I've had that jacket that rain jacket I had for like seven years um, so I was like I just need a new rain jacket yeah, it was like it one of the first ones they gave us as an Oregon State oh. <laughs> so those are good ones though uh, those Nike ones uh, that we got I my dad still uses his you know when he goes to those beaver games he loves it because um, they gave me two I got one for being Benny and one for the marketing thing so I was like well here dad like go yeah, for I, it I had like three eight, three of them <laughs> I bet I bet you did so no and they were very good but like you know I was ready now this one's just an all black Patagonia one and so works for I a lot that. of different occasions exactly yeah you don't want to be repping the beeves even though go beeves you know go beeves all day long every day but i totally get it because for me uh i i'm I'm the same way i have my beaver rain jacket but it's like yeah it's black i got a nice patagonia red and blue one i like wearing um but yeah you just need the one you carry it around you cart it around for a while um you know and then maybe yeah you pawn it off on someone else in seven years Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but, maybe we'll do a video of the how to wash your rain jacket. So I'll be neat. We don't maybe. have one as of right now, but you know who knows? Maybe even by the time this comes out, they'll have we'll have one. Um, but, but I got something for you, real quick. Real uh-oh. quick. Speaking uh-oh. of speaking of clothing, huh? Uh oh. Our pals, our good friends, our buddies. Uh, I know Squatch. We've talked about him a lot. Oh, right. I know Squatch. <laughs> I met him twice, <laughs> but no, you go check out. I mean, this is a, one of the older interviews, so we got to bring him back. Mr. Rick Rells, you know, from I know Squatch, him and Hans, they come up with some cool shit. And part of that is they make, um, they make clo- the d- designs. They put it on clothing, beanies, hats, stickers, you name it. They got it. But what I like about them is they come up with all sorts of different sasquatch designs themes you know it's not just the walking sasquatch that you see everywhere and i definitely we're going to start here because they sent me a box of stuff uh i'm kind of going to do like a mini unboxing on here and show you off what we got but we got stickers here we got the i know squatch rougarou bigfoot research team right here stickers limited a dish people <laughs> limit contact us we'll, we'll mail you some we got a bunch they hooked us up they said pass them out to all your friends and family and people you know who are going to rep i know squatch they even sent a beanie it says whoop which is the like bigfoot call the whoop and there's the beanie <laughs> we got uh i'm going to give that one to jared because they didn't have a shirt in his size i got squatch on a skateboard hey hey i'm, wear- I'm wearing that right now skater die bro skater this die. this shirt's going to you whoop whoop we got another whooper got the whoop shirt we got this one, which is going to Matt. You know, it's the I know Squatch, the peeking, the peeping Squatch, looking around the tree. And I know, spy with my little eye, a Sasquatch. <laughs> right? And they got all the different states, too. So this is an Ohio one. They got Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Wisconsin, all, I think all the states. Um, 
We got this one here. We got the I Know Squatch League uh, baseball tee, <laughs> three quarter sleeves. That is a good one. Uh, yeah. And then we got this one. I'm going to give this one to Tyler, you know, Bigfoot and me. <laughs> you got a little go. big football on the back. <laughs> um, but last but not least, you know, we got the we got the squatch, uh, the king squatch, the looking in the forest, the hide and go seek champion shirt. Looking That's a good, good one too. Yeah, knowing is better than believing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, um, check out I know squatch. Uh, they they do a lot of cool stuff. Um, I like them. They're great I guys. Do. Great guys. But yeah, I mean, I just had to show off that cool shit, my man. Yeah. Anytime we can show off some cool shit, that is where it's at. And speaking of cool shit, it's time for cool shit in nature. Um, I've got two this time, and as always, and I think they're kind of polar opposites. I'm not going to lie. Um, one of them you sent me, the second one you sent me, and not going to lie, um, I got a little sad watching it oh, so, <laughs> i send you a lot of videos so that's why i'm like i know not this one though this one i put in there because uh, i needed to believe that they're still good in the world <laughs> so <laughs> this one uh these guys for the people just listening they oh. are trying to save a beach shark the saw shark look at that he's got the saw thing he's hitting the kayak they're like come on drag how, it out. how crazy because like that's a huge saw, and that thing could take you out real easy when it's just trying to turn like that, you know? It could break your leg, probably. I know. These guys, like, low-key kind of brave. Second, super awesome they did it. <laughs> but I don't think – see, I don't think a saw shark is aggressive in the sense that it'll attack it, – It'll. Attack yeah, and I don't think it would attack them on purpose. It's, I it's think it would be sweet. an accidental swipe. Which makes sense with how he's moving. Yeah. But I, I do like, like, these guys, they know what they're doing, you know. And I, I like to think animals in a situation like that respect the human for helping them out. You know, you get those ones that get tangled in barbed wire and they cut the barbed mm -hmm. wire on them. Like, yeah, they're freaking out. But I do think, like, after the fact, they, they are thankful. You hope. I, I think so, too. I think the the... The only times that they're not truly thankful like that, and it's only because they're like almost reliving a trauma experience, oh. is if they got in the situation because of a human, you know? That makes sense. Like they got, yeah, like a human beach, like was chasing it with a boat and beached it up on shore. Yeah. Then like, I think even when it would be saved, um, you know, it doesn't have that same thank you response. Oh but only because it's reliving and it's like re like trying to figure out a tra traumatic experience it had before. But like, I've seen people do that with deer that get their antlers all tangled and stuff or caught yeah. on stuck on something where then when they cut it, the deer, when it like gets loose, it like pauses for a second. And it's like, thank you. Right. Yeah. I've seen that too. But this one where it gets the, oh, this grizzly bear. Yeah, this the is moose. the one that I got a little sad about. <laughs> well, low key. Before I sent it to you, like I sent you the beginning of the video. Like I didn't even see the babies at first. I was like, what is the mom moose doing? I thought there were rocks on the ground. I did at first and, too. And then I was like watching this bear. Like I sent you the video and then I started watching the video. Yeah. No. And for the people that are just uh, listening, this is a grizzly bear that is slowly walking up to a uh, mama boost moose, mama moose with two babies um well, and uh let's just say it's not too at the end of the video <laughs> what i don't get here is she gets the one baby in the water how come she didn't get them both in the water before so, i was curious about that too and so then i started reading um and it literally says in there um the grizzly bear takes advantage of the fact that Mama Moose has been up all night guarding against the bear's repeated attempts to snag one of her kids. 16 hours. Yeah. So I think it was just tired in reality. Yeah. That makes sense. And those little babies were probably tired too. And yeah. Wow. I, you know, which is interesting because to me, I've never really seen, and this is kind of cool to catch it on film. I've never seen a bear actually take down 
uh, an animal like this. Um, oh, right. Typically, you see them chasing other animals or being chased away. Because I saw like a moose chasing a bear somewhere uh, just recently, I want to say, on a video. Um, but uh, yeah, like to me, I've always seen bears as, as harvesters. You know, they're always, you know, they'll, they'll find the dead bison and then go, go snack on it. But I've never really seen him attack. And it's really interesting because look at this bear. Like, he's just like, he's almost playing like, oh, I'm looking over here. Yeah. Over there. I mean, <laughs> like, I think, I think bears are just up to, up to, optimistic lookers, you know, like they're just they're opportunists. Gonna, yeah. You know, whether they harvest, whether they scavenge or whether they kill, I think that's, it's just whatever seems to be at the optimum moment for it. Yeah, it's interesting though how he's like there on the on the baby and the mom's there, and then he decides to take it away. I know it was kind of weird that it took, but maybe it was just making sure it had good grip or something, you know. It was weird that the mom didn't like actually get out of the water; like she stayed in the water. I, I think that has to do with it being fatigued, probably. So, probably. but super sad um, to see that. But going back to rain because uh, this is just a rainy dreary episode right now <laughs> um, more stuff to do in the rain if you're at the parks uh this kind of continues on with the uh rain gear um you know you we mentioned good boots um but look for paved trails a lot of these uh parks have some sort of paved trails um i know like was it silver falls state park here in oregon they have some paved trails to see some stuff so you can always try and seek out the paved ones if you aren't the most prepared um, for the rain. And a lot of parks have the boardwalks too. You know, yeah. we've seen it in the Redwoods. We've seen it in Hawaii. We've seen it in Yellowstone Glacier, all of the sort, you know, where, where they have the wooden walkway or even like, I like the, the metal one that the Redwoods had. I think that was the best walkway I've seen in the world so far is just because it still allows that plant life to grow below yeah. it. Um, and yeah, like you, you can wear your tennis shoes. Yeah, you're going to get wet because it's rainy, but like it's you're not going to get your shoes soaked because there's puddles and stuff in the mud. Um, and even like, yeah, the dirt, I feel like, yeah, you pick up more water on a dirty trail, uh, dirty yeah, as in dirt, <laughs> than you do. Oh, like yeah, it can, you know, you'll get muddier spots, you'll get puddles and stuff. So, you know, it's a lot harder to stay, keep your feet dry if you're not well prepared. Um, but so look out for are, the boardwalks, paved trails. But if you are hiking too, I do recommend no matter, you know, no matter the time of the year, like I know we looked ridiculous in Hawaii because we're in like tank tops and shorts, but then you got your hiking boots on too, you know, because no matter even what the weather is, I do recommend just having a pair of hiking boots if you plan on doing anything over a mile, just because like it's, they're designed for it. Yeah. You know? Hundred percent hiking boots, or if you don't want to be with the old boots, at least like a good pair of hiking shoes. Um, yeah. So that way, because I mean, that's the inherent risk with uh, with hiking is you never know if you're gonna go pop with the ankle and then all of a sudden, dunzo. Yeah, trips over. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, and you like ugh, exactly like that's my thought too. Like. You don't think like, yeah, I'm on the Bighorn River. Yeah, there's people around me. Yeah, there's cars. But I flip that kayak, you know, that that changes your day. You it lose does. something. Yeah, you, you can't find something. Yeah, you hurt something. That changes your day. It changes plants, just like the rain changes people's plants. Exactly. Um, but continuing on with more stuff to do in the rain, you know, um, continuing with the if we have rain gear we have boots but you just don't want to get like pelted with rain because it's falling or maybe wind is a factor too try and find more forest trails you know yes it's wet yes you're going to get wet but this is if you're well prepared for it with the rain jacket and boots um because you won't get hit as hard with it coming down or you won't get hit by the wind because there's trees and stuff blocking it so no, that was, you know, I didn't even think about that when you first mentioned that at, when we were talking about this before the podcast, because you don't think about that treetop canopy and how it is helping out. Um, yeah. The one thing, like, like you do say, you know, is be careful, watch, you know, and I know you, I know this is coming up, but watch for lightning because 
when you are in the trees that, you know, that's what it, it could hit. Um, oh, 100%. So definitely be safe around there, but you, you are probably going to be a little more covered. You know, that was the nice thing about that trip in Glacier we did do is we did do a forest trail. We were in mm -hmm. a canopied area. Yeah, we were still getting wet, but we weren't getting as wet as we were if we were to, uh, to do what we actually had planned for that day. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, that's what makes the redwoods so nice because <laughs> yeah. they're in the trees. And so, yeah, it's wet and it's wet in the redwoods like a lot. Um, oh, yeah. But they say they, say they get 70% of their water from just the fog alone. Yeah. Yeah. If, if that tells you what, what kind of water that, what kind of water source they're getting, you know, it's, it's, it's wet. It's, you're in a rainforest. <laughs> yeah. That in the Olympic, you know, you're just, it's, it's a wet time, but uh, other things, yeah. Mentioned it, you know, this is part of the preparedness, you know, watch out for lightning. If you are going to trump through the, uh, the rain and stuff, if you're up in the mountains, lightning can happen at any moment so um it really can and it's scary because like we've had a few times where like you're just walking on a hike and you're like oh, what the hell was that yeah um because it just happens and mountain weather is a thing it, mountains create their own weather including thunderstorms you know if it's a 90 80 degree day and that temperature change like you're saying drops that's going to create those thunderstorms that's going to create that rain that's going to create those those things that you got to be prepared for. Um, mm -hmm. And like, I don't, I don't know about you, but that's why I, I think they make those backpacks as big as they do for when you're hiking. Cause I know when we go to Glacier this summer, yeah, it could be 80 degrees the whole time we're there, but I'm, you, you know, I'm going to have a pair of rain pants and a rain jacket in my backpack at, at all times. Cause those clouds, they come out of nowhere and they move, they, they form their own systems. They, mm -hmm. it's kind of wild. Cause like, the weatherman is the one job that, you know, they can predict and be wrong every single day of their job, but yet they get to keep their job. Chaos theory in motion. It's, <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And if you don't know what chaos theory is, watch the first Jurassic Park. I honestly think we, I think we interview Kelman when we talk to him, when we talk to everyday backpacker about a storm he encountered up in the crazy mountains. Oh, where the we did, and that's a really good story. <laughs> yeah, so go check out that episode because that's exactly it. He it was a beautiful day, and then the rain hit, and then the wind came, and then the and that's the other thing is is when it's rainy, you got to know I think what kind of rain you're dealing with, and like what kind of terrain as well because in the mountains, yeah, you can have it like today where it's just here in Billings where it's just raining all day long. But you can have those thunderstorms, those lightning storms that come through and just change everything in, in an hour. They downpour, they add hail, they add whatever. So you got to be prepared. Um, so that's why it's good to look at the, the forecast before any of your trips to see what you're doing, see what you want to do. Uh, I know that's going to be something when we do that chalet that we're going to be monitoring. Um, Looking so far in Montana, I mean, next week it's supposed to be, I think Thea said it's supposed to be like 90 some degrees next week. Damn. Out here. And I'm just like, gosh, darn. <laughs> we're, uh, we're not that hot. Um, but <laughs> anyways, I got to be that guy. Um, I am going to rain on this parade of talking about rain um, with our final words. So final words, my guy. You know, I didn't know how we could talk about rain that long, honestly, um, and just the crazy things that it does and the crazy things we've done in it, you know, and, you know, you driving through a rainstorm in Lingle, me driving through a rainstorm tornado thing yesterday, uh, dealing with the elements, you know, it's, it's, it makes you think definitely be prepared, um, be prepared, have a plan B, C, D know and educate yourself about the park that you're going to or the location you're going to beforehand to find alternative ideas. Um, that's definitely something that, you know, I, I, I think about where it's like, well, if it is kind of shitty when we're up in Glacier, what are we going to do? What, what do we want to see? You know, who, who's coming with us? What, you know, how's Matt in the rain? How's Tyler in the rain? You know, know your group partners because, some of them might just hate it 
And you might have to be like, yeah, today we're, we're doing visitor centers all day long. So take your time in the visitor centers, read every little paragraph on every little sign, because why not learn something? Um, and, and know that these parks too, like, what's part of making these parks cool is the weather, right? So sometimes it is fun to go out and be in that rain, you know, because who, I would love to experience a rainstorm in Zion and see a flash flood, not be a part of a flash flood, <laughs> see a flash flood, <laughs> you know, like definitely see that and understand that and, and understand that like your trip's not ruined because of the weather. Make the weather a part and about your trip you know because that's what's cool about these places this is where you know these national parks are they're in some of these places where the earth is changing on the daily basis you know because they're up on the continental divide where snow and mountains and water and start everything starts you know the the, the cycle the water cycle everything it's wild it's cool you know yeah. so don't be like oh it rained it ruined my day be like oh it rained so this is what we did this is what we experienced wow i didn't realize the bears come out more in the rain or, you know, cause that stuff does happen cause it scares people away. So other animals come out, you know, it's all sorts of different things. They'll always look for the positive. All right, go for it. I love it, man. I love it. No reverence, final words of wisdom. Uh, stay beautiful. Everybody cannot tell you how much I appreciate every single one of you for listening all the way through. It really, uh, it's really awesome of you. Um, but yeah, no, just kind of piggybacking off old Zach there, looking the positive in things. There's a, there's a lot. It's easy. Uh, it's easy to be a Debbie Downer. It's easy to poison the water. Um, but, you know, think of the positives uh, and that will go a long way for you. Other one is I'm willing to bet I did probably like six different rain puns throughout this uh, episode. So make sure if you haven't, uh, you didn't catch them, go back and look for those brain puns because uh, i did them intentionally and not intentionally uh, I, didn't, I didn't pick up on them so yeah um uh, but no with that being said peace out everybody bye